Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're gonna take a look at the economy, see what's going on. We're gonna take a look at what Michael Burry is doing from the big short, as well as uh, some corporate debt that might be coming in in a huge wave. And uh, just the fact that this isn't a normal recession. So there's gonna be um, a lot of carnage in the industry, a lot of collapsing liquidity, some rebalancing of portfolios talking about um, you know false breakouts or dead cap bounces, bear squeezes, whatever you want to call them. So if you guys haven't seen the movie already, The Big Short, highly recommend it. It's a great financial movie uh, about a profitable trader who bet against the market in 2008 and won big. Uh, it wasn't very easy for him, but he was infamous for his painful but ultimately timing and profitable big short against mortgage-backed securities during the 2008 financial crisis. So Michael Burry is the doctor turned hedge fund manager. He's been on a multi-day Twitter rant claiming that the lockdown intended to contain COVID ban- pandemic was actually worse than the disease itself. So he thinks this could trigger one of the country's deepest ever economic contractions and that COVID policy settled by politicians uh, don't do much for the general public, but paying out billions, if not trillions of dollars to the richest thousand people out there. Claiming this is no justification for sweeping government policies, lacking any and all nuances that destroys the lives, jobs, and businesses of the other 99.8%. On the investment side, Burry told the Bloomberg News last month that he placed a significant bearish bet uh, without giving some details, he did say that uh, a good size was against all indexes. So he said the pandemic could unwind the passive investment boom, which he's compared to purchasing of collateralized debt obligations or CDOs that fueled the pre-2008 mortgage bubble. The CDOs or collateralized debt obligations are, are derivatives. And so uh, it wasn't really the housing that collapsed uh, in 2008. It was all of the derivatives underneath that. Um, so to his point, it's going to be all of those uh, those underlying securities that cause a lot of collapse. And so we're already seeing that in real estate investment trusts and, and other uh, aspects of the industry. A lot of this is going to be uh, an issue of underlying um, derivatives. Another aspect is going to be uh, angels, uh, fallen angels. So if you are a AAA rated bond and then you're all of a sudden junk status, that's technically a fallen angel. So just today we had Nordstrom uh, that's going to be issuing junk bonds, I think 500 million just to kind of keep things going. So they're another fallen angel. And so as bonds get downgraded, that means that pension plans have to sell them. So they have a requirement where they have to hold AAA or riskless Uh, securities. doesn't really exist, but AAA is the best they can get. If things get downgraded at some point, these pension plans have to sell. Now that exacerbates the problem because if everyone is selling at the same time, that becomes systemic. So a downgrade is a terrible uh, issue or problem for a lot of these equities uh, because it, it causes... Uh, some pandemonium amongst holders. Um, so whether they're in a pension plan or whether that's you know a government fund that includes sovereign wealth funds, any other funds that have uh, a triple A rating that gets downgraded, they're forced to sell, causes a downward spiral effect. So now triple B bonds now make up nearly 50% of the index of investment grade bonds at an all-time high. Triple B bonds are now only one notch above a high yield uh, or essentially junk. Investors have never been more at risk of capital loss if yields were to rise. So there's a total of $6.4 trillion in triple uh, B bonds that are about to be downgraded. So this potential tsunami of fallen angels have $3 trillion in bonds on the cusp of downgrade. So it's the biggest threat to the credit pillar of both the U.S. economy and stock market. Some of the downgrades include uh, Ford, more recently Macy's, I just mentioned uh, Nordstrom. So there's never emerged a clear catalyst that would trigger a, a wholesale downgrade of names to junk, especially since the Fed ending its monetary tightening in late 2018 and, and they unleashed another rate cut cycle. And Morgan Stanley points out that no less than 55% of these triple B rated investment grade bonds should have a junk rating based on leverage alone. We've seen the pace of rating downgrades materially accelerate over the past few weeks, and the amount of outstanding new minted fallen angel bonds has jumped to $149 billion this quarter. Some of the most notable ones, there's three issuers that amount to um, roughly three quarters of the overall amount of downgraded bonds, and that uh, accounts for Heinz or Kraft, 
Ford, and Occidental Petroleum. So those three issuers out of 17 recently account for three quarters of the overall amount of downgraded bonds. So just prior to these downgrades, three quarters of them or 75% of the fallen angel bonds uh, did have an outlook for negative or, or potential downgrade. A total of $555 billion worth of bonds could migrate into junk bonds over the next six months. In addition, there's $149 billion that have already been downgraded year to date. So this is all kind of leading up to a corporate debt reckoning, uh, a huge tidal wave of some corporate debt that's all about to come due, either defaulting. Even today, uh, Lebanon, the country of Lebanon had defaulted on a bond. Um, so that's going to create a whole tidal wave of, of foreign currency and corporate debt restructuring all kind of coming our way. So this is a corporate debt time bomb everyone is talking about. Uh, unable to kind of diffuse at the moment. So one in six U.S. companies is now a zombie, meaning that their interest rate expense exceeds their earnings before interests and taxes. So there's a lot of companies, and I've mentioned zombie companies before, that have to go out and collect debt, grab some debt in order to stay in business. So their debt payments are higher than their revenues. So this is going to be a good thing. Uh, there are some good things that are going to come out of this pandemic, like these companies going out of business, as well as altruistic cannabis companies that haven't paid themselves. Those companies should move off to the side and go work for somebody else, get out of the way and create a fourth quarter pop for those businesses that still remain in business. We can kind of blame this on record low interest rates, which inspired complacency. So looking at the 12 months leading up to November of 2019, non-financial S&P cash balances declined 11%. So revenue was already declining uh, more than 10% leading up to the COVID. Greater than 50% of outstanding debt is rated triple B, just one rung above junk status. So bond ETFs could face a liquidity crisis as a flood of rege redemptions force offloading of all too illiquid bonds. So red lights are now flashing. Bond ETFs have been trading at historic discounts versus the NAV of their underlying bonds. That's the net asset value. So buybacks and dividends will dry up. That's good. We'll talk about buybacks in a second. That basically fueled the last 10 years, the longest uh, bubble was all a matter of buybacks. It's fascinating that buybacks aren't happening now at historic lows, but they were all about it at the all-time highs. Just look at Boeing. They shouldn't get a penny of taxpayer dollars. It should just be an industry that's nationalized rather than bailed out. They were incredibly um, inefficient and ineffective and uh, had no fiduci fiduciary duty to their shareholders by buying stock back in order to get, uh, you know, employee bonuses for, for CEOs, uh, $60 billion worth of buybacks is insane. So let them fail and just nationalize the, the whole industry. Uh, there's a bailout decisions made by the Fed and politicians. They're defining that for the election. Obviously Moody's has already dropped their ratings of dozen, uh, dozens of companies, uh, dropping from investment grade to high yield, totaling $215 billion by the end of the year. Notorious rating agencies that were corrupted during the great financial crisis are putting extraordinary pressures back on Moody's and S&P and Fitch to stay ob objectively. But that's not really going to happen. The U.S. had their rating downgraded and they got sued. So uh, as soon as the rating agencies got sued by the U.S., they just propped that right back up. So that's the, one of the problems of, of having the banks and, and all of these companies pay rating agencies is there's a conflict of interest right off the bat. All in all, these downgrades are going to force a lot of selling, likely at steep losses. So downgrading to junk could prove a death sentence for a lot of these companies crippled by the lockdown. So the yield gap between investment grade and junk uh, has never been higher right now than you know the previous decade at least. There's a lot of companies that are borrowing to survive. 28% of all U.S. companies with market caps of less than a billion dollars are zombies. So more than one out of four companies are, are having higher debt payments than revenue. So with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe or don't. And I'm out.